Welcome to my series on working with the YouTube API with PHP code. In this first part of the series, we're going to do some initial setup. Step one is we need to set up a new project via the Google Cloud Console. This is what's going to give us access to the API. And then step two, we're going to get set up with a package that Google puts out. Uh, it's their API PHP client. This is going to give us the code we need to communicate with the API. So once we have those two things set up, we will uh, show a very basic example of just communicating with the API just to confirm that everything is set up correctly. And then in videos that follow this, we'll look at several examples of working with the API, starting with some read examples, things like querying for information about a single video or getting the list of all the videos that belong to a particular channel. Uh, and then once we're comfortable with basic read access, we will move on to write access. We'll see how we can set up any OAuth connection with the API. And this will give us the ability to alter data on YouTube. For example, if we wanted to edit the details of a video, the title, the description, we could even upload videos via the API. So we'll see some examples of that. So that's the game plan and let's jump right in. The first thing we need to do is go over to the Google Cloud Console and set up a new project. So at the very top, you should see this drop down. If you click this, it'll bring up a window with your current projects. If you've never created a project here before, I think you'll see a dialogue asking you to like agree to their terms and services. So go ahead and do that. And then once you get past that, once you see this window, click the button to add a new project. Let's give our project a name. I'm just gonna call mine demo. And then I'll click create. I'll give that a moment to generate. And then once it's done in the drop down, if we click it again, we can select the project that we just created and just make sure that's listed in the dropdown. Now, the next thing we wanna do is generate a API key we're gonna to use to connect to the YouTube service. Uh, to do that, we can go to the section APIs and services, and then we're looking for credentials. And here we'll click create credentials. And to begin with, we're gonna set up an API key, which is what we need to do any sort of read communication with the API, just to retrieve data. Uh, as I mentioned later, when we look at examples of writing data, we will need a higher level of authentication there. At that point, we'll set up a OAuth client ID. Uh, but for right now, we're just going to choose API key. That'll generate you a key. So just go ahead and copy that and just paste it somewhere. Uh, we'll need that in a moment when we set up our code. All right, the last thing we need to do right now in the console is we need to actually enable the YouTube API as one of the cloud services we're gonna be working with. And to do that, I'm gonna to go to enabled APIs and services. You can see it tells me I don't currently have any APIs enabled, uh, but I can go over to the API library to do that. So I'm gonna follow this link. I'm gonna search for YouTube. And you can see there's a few different APIs to choose from, but we want the data API, so I'll click that and then I'll click enable. So that's all we need to do in the console for right now. So let's turn our attention to the code. I wanna show you what I've got set up for the demo I'm gonna be working in. I've just got a bare bones PHP application. I've got a blank index.php file. I've got a starting composer config file because we are gonna be pulling in some outside packages via composer. Uh, and then I've got this all running on a local server. So here you can see that blank index page in my browser. So like I said, a very bare bones example, but anything that I'm gonna be showing, any of the code samples I'm gonna be sharing, you can of course apply this in different contexts. Let's say you're working in a framework like Laravel, uh, you can very easily incorporate the code I'm gonna be showing. You would just be putting it in things like your controller files or other classes, depending on how you have things organized. All right, so that's the setup. Um, let's talk about the outside dependencies we're gonna to need to communicate with the API. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we're gonna be using the Google API PHP client. So scrolling down in the notes that accompany this video, I'm gonna go past all the instructions we just went through for setting up things in the Cloud Console. I'm gonna go down to this section under Code Setup. Uh, and the first thing we're gonna do is run this Composer Require command. That's gonna pull in the API client for us. So let's copy this from the notes. I'm gonna run this in my project. And you can see that updated my composer config with that package and I now have a vendor directory where the code for that package should exist. The other thing I wanna pull in in my example is the Symphony Veradumper package. This is just gonna give me access to a dump function, which is gonna be useful when I'm inspecting responses from the YouTube API. I'm gonna be getting lots of complex objects and arrays back and I wanna dump them to the page in a legible fashion. So I wanna pull this in and it's up to you. You don't have to pull this in if you just wanna use PHP's Veradump function, that would also work. Or again, if you're working in something like Laravel, you already have access to a dump function so you can skip this step. 
So with our outside dependencies set up, now we want to pull together some code that's going to take advantage of them. Uh, and for this, I'm going to once again go back to the notes. I have some starting code we can work with. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to bring this into my index file. And the very first thing I'm doing in this file is pulling in my composer autoload file. So I have access to any of the outside classes that I had required. Um, now, once again, if you're working in a framework like Laravel, you should already have auto loading preset up for you. So in uh, that case, you can omit this line in the code that you pull in. Uh, following that, I have three use statements. These are three different classes within our outside dependencies that we're going to be using within this code. So I make them accessible. Uh, then we've got a config we want to set up. We want to indicate the uh, API key we're going to be connecting as. So I'm going to go back to my text editor where I had uh, pasted my API key and bring that over into my code. And then following that, I have uh, three lines that are initializing some objects with that Google API client. The first sets up the client itself. So we create a new object of that client class, which comes from this use statement. And uh, upon that object, we're going to invoke a method called set developer key, where we'll pass our API key. This is where we're basically uh, identifying ourselves with the API. And then once we have that client, we can create a new instance of the YouTube service, which is going to give us access to all of the YouTube API functionality. All right, so now we have that service. And then down here, we're going to put it to use. And we're just doing a basic query here. I'm uh, invoking a query against the API to give me the details for a video with this particular ID. And this is purely just for proof of concept at this point. We just want to make sure we can establish a connection with the API and get some information from it. Uh, so you can see the very last thing I do is I use that dump function just to dump the response that we're getting back. And let's see what this gets us. So saving my changes, I'm going to go back to the browser refresh my demo URL. And this is what you want to see at this point. You want to see this object of the type of video list response. There's a bunch of meta information here, but if we dig in under items, we should see a single item here because we're getting the details for a single video. Uh, and that uh, gives us an instance of this Google video class, which if we dig into that, we've got more meta information. But if we go all the way down to snippet, here we can get to the, the details of the video, things like the description, uh, the title, thumbnails, all of that meta information we can access. All right, so that's what we want to see at this point. It's purely just proof of concept that we are communicating with the API. We're able to fetch information from YouTube. Now, if you don't see something like this, let's say, for example, you had the wrong API key, and I'll purposely edit mine here to uh, show you what this would look like. Uh, in that case, you're going to get a error back, and there should be details there indicating what the problem is. So here it's telling me that it's not a valid API key. All right, so use whatever information it gives you to troubleshoot that. And if it's not as clear as just fixing your API key and you're not sure what's wrong, uh, leave a comment describing the problem. I can help point you in the right direction. Uh, but that's our goal in this video is just to get to this point. I've got it back to a working state just to show that I have set everything up in the Google Cloud Console. I've got that API client set up so I can communicate with it. I'm able to successfully get a response back. And like I said, we're going to now build on this. Uh, in the next video, we're going to look closer at the actual query that we made and talk about the different methods we have available to us when it comes to communicating with this API.